Tonight, FIFO sites infected, dozens forced into isolation. Big miners call for close contact rules to change now to keep operations running. Show your certificate, vax proof rules kick in, but some venues spared at the last minute. Not copping the border, Eagles and Dockers home games on the line. The AFL set to resist COVID bubbles. New COVID defences in classrooms as students return to school. Charity tragedy, a man trapped in a donation bin dies. And a first look at the Winter Olympics opening ceremony as our curlers get cleared of COVID. Live from Perth, 7 News with Susanna Carr and Rick Arden. Good evening and welcome to 7 News. There are new demands tonight to bring in planned close contact rules now rather than wait for Omicron to escalate. That's because 80 FIFO workers are tonight in isolation, putting the state's cash cow in the Pilbara at risk because of just two cases. Jeff Parry begins our coverage. Things didn't get off to a good start when protesters tried to get into the Northbridge Police Centre today. You take your mask off so I can talk to you because I'm a little bit deaf in hearing, mate. So take your mask off and be polite. They're probably a little angrier now. They're shut out of so many places if they're unvaccinated. And they thought nothing of bringing the morning commute to a standstill on southbound Mitchell Freeway. Looks like most of us are here. Police closed the freeway while protesters were removed. No appearance from the Premier today, but the opposition has finally weighed in on Mark McGowan's decision to scrub February the 5th as the date to open our borders. When you read the Chief Health Officer's advice, he, he points quite clearly to the fact that there will be a waning immunity for those that were boosted early. With the risk of Omicron coinciding with the flu season, the opposition says the border has to open no later than March 5th. We see an end to this secrecy and uncertainty that is causing great concern not only in the health sector but in our business community. There were 12 new COVID infections today, down on yesterday, but a number of mine sites and refineries have active cases and scores of contacts are in isolation for 14 days. The Chamber of Minerals and Energy says that's unsustainable and the government should bring planned quarantine changes forward immediately. Seven days of isolation if you're a COVID positive. If you're a close contact but you are asymptomatic and you um, do a rapid antigen test and test negative, you're allowed to go back to work. The opposition acknowledges that Mark McGowan still has majority support for his handling of the pandemic, but that the popular thing to do isn't always the right thing to do, and that the Premier is failing to deliver good leadership. If the Premier wants to make popular decisions that put people's lives at risk, then that's just irresponsible. Jeff Parry, Seven News. Most businesses across the state were only open to the fully inoculated today as the toughest proof of vaccination rules in the country came into effect. The Premier's hardline approach has cast doubt on whether Perth will host any AFL matches this season, with teams from the East unlikely to cop quarantine rules for a third year. No jab. No service. Can I please have proof of vaccination? From today, West Australians aged 16 and over have to show proof they're double jabbed everywhere from gyms awesome. Thank you. to pubs and cafes you have a and bottle shops. It is stressful. Of course it's stressful because you don't know how that person is going to react. Flavia Trollio says policing the government mandate has added to their workload and has already cost them customers. We've only had a few that have come in and haven't been able to show us proof of vaccination in which we've turned them back. It, um, it is what it is. If Flavia doesn't follow the rules, she could be fined up to $250,000 and if customers threaten her or her staff over the mandate, they could cop a $50,000 fine or a year in jail. We will respect that. Not everyone does. The Australian brew house in Coogee was planning an anti-mandate party but has instead closed the doors indefinitely, protesting the mandates. There's still confusion on how far the rules go. Judges, jurors and court workers must be double vaxxed, but not witnesses and defendants. Public pools don't require proof of vaccination. Flip-flopping health advice. Tough going for businesses trying to keep up. 
It's not only small businesses struggling with WA's COVID rules. Big businesses are finding it increasingly difficult to deal with WA's hard border as more high-profile industry leaders leave WA indefinitely. Qantas AFL and Woodside chairman Richard Goider is one of them. The hard border proving too hard to do business and possibly too hard for the AFL. The chairman says there's no appetite for hubs in 2022. As it stands, the Eagles will play the Suns on March 20 at Optus Stadium. But if the border rules don't change, the fixtures might. Cyan Doherty, 7 News. Masks sat alongside lunchboxes for the first day of Term 1 as nervous parents sent children back to school knowing COVID is in the community. The state government says restrictions will tighten further, but there's no word on exactly when. They've got their lunch packed and their shoes tied tight. In 2022, the school routine includes something extra. But there's no masking parents' concerns. Personally, a bit of anxiety. Dee Rasmussen and her four boys know what schooling's like with COVID. They've just moved here from Melbourne. I feel like Perth doesn't know what's coming. But it knows something's coming. With the sudden surge in the community, it's been um, yeah, a little bit worrying. A little bit anxious um, with everything that's going on. I think all the precautions that have been put in place have put a lot of parents at ease. Masks are one line of defence, mandatory for high school kids. It's a bit annoying because it's harder to focus at school because you're like, uh, you can barely breathe. I'm kind of used to it now because we did it a lot last year. Optional for now at primary schools. Vaccination is compulsory for staff. Around 90 teachers didn't meet the mandate deadline. I'm delighted that we've got a teacher in front of every classroom today. Unvaccinated parents can still visit school grounds for drop-off, pick-up and volunteering once a week. But it might not be for long. That will change when the Chief Health Officer gives us the advice on what else we need to do when case numbers go up. These HEPA filters are another way we're hoping to stop the virus spreading at school. 12,000 of them have been delivered across the state. Wearing of masks, we know that the ventilation aspects are really important and then the HEPA filters, which really do add an extra element to protecting staff and kids in schools. Experts say you should be able to get about a week of use out of an N95 mask if you look after it properly. Surgical masks will only last about a day. Fabric masks need to have three layers to have any effect and should be washed once a day. The kids need their education, so if this keeps the schools open, then I'm really happy to just do what's needed. Worth it to keep the kids in the classroom. Rory Campbell, 7 News. A man has died in our northern suburbs after becoming wedged in a charity bin. It's the second time in just seven months Perth's donation drop-offs have claimed a life. Today's tragedy has again put companies under pressure to update the design. Cassidy Moscone reports. Police protect a shopping centre car park, but officers say this isn't a crime scene. It's the scene of a terrible accident. A man's life lost, taken by a charity bin. A member of the public made the grim discovery at 5.30 this morning at Westfield Whitford's. Yeah, yeah dropping kids off first day of school and just saw all the police and was wondering what happened. Very sad. Officers were still investigating in time for school drop-off. Kids and their parents walk by just metres from where the man was killed. Police left, but the bins stayed put. Charity donors unaware of what happened. Oh, no, it's tragic. Yeah, yeah really awful. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I feel ill now. It was nearly midday before the bins were moved. With the amount of poverty that's around, people are trying to get in there and, uh, yeah, something's got to change. We can't keep losing lives. Just seven months ago, 33-year-old mother Alara Lawrence suffered the same tragic fate. Her body was found lifeless, wedged in a Good Samaritan's bin in Baldivis. Even though a lot of these charity bins do have the warning labels on them, people aren't listening. Safety experts are calling for the design to be changed so another life isn't lost. Anglicare WA has done just that. The charity organisation has replaced about half of its bins to the new safe design and it's working to replace the lot. Rather than opening and closing where people can perhaps get into it or, or, or take from it, the entire mechanism has changed so it is safe. 
At $3,000 a bin, it's not cheap, but it's a price Anglicare is willing to pay to save a life. Cassidy Moscone, 7 News. Scott Morrison's chance of winning the election has taken a nosedive as the coalition shifts its strategy to winning back voters. A mammoth spending blitz is about to get underway with aged care workers first in line for a boost to their hip pocket. The pandemic has stolen lives, businesses and freedoms and Australians are increasingly over COVID. It's been a very uh, ter um, terrible two years, really. Particularly in aged care, with 400 residents dying of COVID this month alone. There are drastic staff shortages in aged care, which mean that older Australians aren't getting the care on a daily basis that they need. The government rejects that, but does acknowledge death rates in the sector are too high and wages low. In a speech to the National Press Club tomorrow, setting the scene for the coming election, Scott Morrison will announce two Two further bonuses of up to $400 each for Australia's 234,000 residential aged care workers. The first payment in the next three weeks, the second in May, the expected election month. As news poll today shows Labor taking a 12-point lead, 56-44, and Mr Morrison's popularity collapsing. Anthony Albanese now just two points behind as preferred Prime Minister and hammering the government for not making rapid antigen tests free for all. If they're saying to Australians that they're not worth a few dollars to get a rapid antigen test, then they are kidding themselves. The Australian people are giving us a kick up the rear end at the moment and, you know, we haven't got everything right. We acknowledge that. I'm told Scott Morrison will acknowledge that too in his speech tomorrow, although insists no government has been perfect and that his has the superior plan for recovery. Hoping for a second <laughs> miracle win. If I had a lazy hundred, I'd put it on us. But knowing the odds are getting longer. Now, it isn't all over for Scott Morrison. He can turn this around. It's just he doesn't have much time left to do it. Government MPs tell me the message they're getting is the voters aren't just angry about rapid antigen tests, but the old hip pocket nerve issues too, soaring petrol prices, groceries, clothes, everything seemingly going up, except wages, all as infections keep rising. And that is changing the political game. Voters have rewarded state governments, particularly WAs, for their handling of the pandemic over the past two years. But the coalition fears it won't be thanks that greets Scott Morrison at the polls but blame. Rick? Thanks, Mark. Hundreds of anti-vaxxers have reached the front doors of Parliament House protesting against COVID jabs. Members of the convoy to Canberra drove thousands of kilometres to the capital, some from as far as Perth, demanding an end to vaccine mandates. All public entries to the building were closed as dozens of police officers managed the crowd. There's a huge sigh of relief across Australia's Winter Olympic team tonight after a serious COVID scare for a special team. It was one of our curlers who tested positive, putting our very first time in the competition at risk. After a nervous wait, two negative tests have them back in the business. Tickets booked and off to make history. Australia's first ever Winter Olympic curlers, Tali Gill and Dean Hewitt, with the nation's well wishes. A lifelong dream so nearly shattered at Beijing Airport when Tali returned a positive result on an ultra sensitive test. Something that we both prepared for to happen, so. It's not really a distraction, it's just something we both went through. Shedding a previous infection picked up while training in Canada. Tonight, Tali and Dean are out of isolation, relieved and ready to get back into routine. As a family, we're so excited and thrilled. We're able to watch her in a couple of days. They're just going to get on with business and, and do the best they can. It'll be great. They've dealt with all the, all the challenges and the unknown. They're just looking forward to getting back to their sport. Now, given the green light, this is where Tali and Dean hope to sweep their way into medal contention. In 2008, this venue was known as the Water Cube. Transformed, it's now known as the Ice Cube. And it's here where on Wednesday, our curlers will face their next challenge against the United States. We're out now and I feel, you know, absolutely ready to get out there and compete. Our mogul skiers were given their first practice run. Floodlights cranked up for a Beijing winter bluster. I feel like I'm in the, the MCG or something right now. A heavy fall of fresh powder, the best kind of medicine for Matt Graham. As he recovers from surgery on his collarbone. All the kind of aches and pains kind of get out of your body when you're actually skiing. Getting comfortable on the snow. So first day, you always want to try and figure out 
you know, the little intricacies of the course. And especially happy with one creature comfort at the village. The Oz Team House is so cool and um, it's the first time I've had Aussie coffee in about three months. We got a barista, we got chefs, we got everything we need. In Beijing, David Woywood, 7 News. Ash Barty has flown back to Queensland in world number one style on a private jet. She touched down in Brisbane before making the half hour journey to her hometown of Ipswich. A homecoming parade and free tennis lessons are being put on in honour of the 25 year old. The local council has also applied for funding to create a statue of the tennis star. The sporting world is still catching its breath after tennis superstar Rafael Nadal pulled off one of his greatest ever wins. Nadal came from two sets down in the Australian Open final to secure a record 21st major title after a gruelling five-hour match that went well into the night. On pure numbers, Rafa is a standout. The satisfaction is just uh, impossible to describe. But the heart he showed to overcome enormous hardship, including a serious foot injury and a case of COVID, to claim his record-breaking Grand Slam title further enhanced his champion status. It's 21 for Rafa, and he stands alone at the summit of men's tennis. Going the distance to clinch his 21st major meant slugging it out with world number two Daniel Medvedev for five hours and 24 minutes. The Spaniard's moment of glory came just after one o'clock this morning. Finally, was probably the, the most unexpected year for me you know, to, to achieve one more time this. Rarely has there been a more popular winner at Melbourne Park. Medvedev was booed on his introduction and sought to stir up the crowd in big moments during the match. He also complained to the umpire about crowd behaviour. It's, uh, it's disappointing. It's, uh, it's disrespectful. It's disappointing. Uh, I'm not sure after 30 years I'm, I'm going to want to play tennis. Medvedev made a low-key exit this afternoon from Melbourne Airport. In trying to win support, he did himself no favours by seemingly uttering boring during the post-match address by Tennis Australia president Jane Herdlicker. Rafael Nadal is fifth in the world rankings, but he can now claim to be the greatest male player of all time. Acknowledgement from other greats came quickly. To my friend and great rival, Rafael Nadal, heartfelt congratulations. A few months ago, we were both joking about being on crutches. Congratulations to Rafael Nadal for 21st Grand Slam. Amazing achievement. Tournament boss Craig Tiley has vowed to review the controversy which dogged the tournament as well as the triumphant finish. The Djokovic deportation and plight of refugees highlighted by the arrest of a protester on centre court. We'll define the Australian Open on the success we've had in, the, in these past two weeks. I just want to enjoy the moment and keep going. Cameron Bow, 7 News. Samantha Jolly joins us now with an early look at the weather. Looking a bit windy tomorrow, Sam. So it will be uh, sunny and warm again, but yes, those winds will be quite strong, especially in the morning. There is a wind warning for local waters. Today, the easterly winds dominated, so the temperature kept climbing until we got to 31.6 degrees before 3.30, and we still haven't had a sea breeze. Bullsbrook got to 32 degrees, 31 in Fremantle and further south, a cooler 28 for Kalamunda. While it's been clear skies in the metro area, we've had some wild weather in our Kimberley. 370 millimetres of rain in Broome over the past few days. That's caused by a tropical low embedded in a monsoon trough. For Perth, it will slowly warm up this week and I'll have your updated forecast right after sport. Rick and Sue. Thanks, Sam. We saw disruption on the roads in Perth over COVID mandates today. But the truck rally over the US-Canada border rules was next level. Coming up, the huge protest convoy that forced the Canadian Prime Minister into hiding. An alarming new missile claim from North Korea. Road rage shootout the moment a driver opens fire. A van crashed as a truck tips over in Perth's east. And surprise bestseller, the car overtaking the Toyota Camry as Australia's new family favourite. That's ahead. A van driver has walked away from a terrifying car crash after his vehicle was crushed in Kewdale this morning. Remarkably, he only had minor cuts and bruises to his body after being struck by this truck. The truck ended up on its side across the busy intersection of Kewdale and Abernethy Roads. 
I'm Sorry. going now to buy a lot of ticket <laughs> <laughs> because from this car it's hard to be alive. Traffic was held up for most of the morning. It was four hours before a crane was able to safely get the truck back upright. The truck driver was also unhurt. Canada's Prime Minister and his family have been moved to a safe location as thousands of protesters converge on the country's capital. It's part of a rolling truck convoy as drivers demand an end to vaccine mandates. But some actions have already become the focus of police investigations. They rolled into Canada's capital in the thousands. <laughs> Frustrated truck drivers demanding an end to cross-border vaccine mandates. Passport mandates is too, it's too invasive. Uh, it just goes against everything that we have known as a, de a democratic people. Their protest morphing into a movement against the country's public health measures to stop the spread of COVID-19. My son saw no purpose of living no more, so he took his life away. For a second day, demonstrators converged on Parliament Hill, demanding the Prime Minister stand down. Prime Minister Trudeau and his family left their Ottawa home over the weekend, moving to an undisclosed location over safety concerns. People are uh, rightfully worried. Uh, this has, uh, you know, this has elements of uh, extremism. Police condemning those carrying Nazi flags and launching an investigation into protesters seen standing on the tomb of the unknown soldier. People aren't carrying Nazi flags because they're actually Nazis. Maybe people are saying that this is a fascist dictatorship. Freedom! 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 The group behind the protest has so far raised $8 million, enough cash, they say, to fuel their fight. In the United States, Ashley Mullaney, 7 News. North Korea claims it's conducted its biggest missile launch in five years. The country's state-owned media says this is the ballistic Hwasong-12 missile, which it has previously said can carry a heavy nuclear warhead. North Korea says the launch was to verify the weapon's accuracy. It's been condemned by Japan and South Korea, who say the missile reached an altitude of 2,000 kilometres before plunging into the Sea of Japan. A driver's own dash camera has caught him in a frightening road rage shootout. Police say he just cut off another driver and slammed on the brakes when you see him pull a gun from the centre console and wait for the driver to catch up. Detectives confirm he was fired on first before shooting 11 bullets, but the other driver claims he threw a water bottle. He didn't fire a gun. The man on the dash cam resigned from his job as a fire inspector and handed himself into police. A summer deluge buckets down on Broome. A famous tourist town underwater. Coming up next, water over roads and creeks swollen. A month's worth of rain in a day. Plus, the Air Force called in to deliver critical supplies to the flood-ravaged outback. Back. The Ukraine crisis escalates with new threats from Russia and the UK. And Perth getting ready to celebrate the Year of the Tiger. That's next. Broome has been hit with more than 150 millimetres of rain for the second day in a row. The torrential downpour caused flooding to parts of the Kimberley town, which was still mopping up from yesterday's deluge. Water was flowing across roads in some areas, making driving difficult. These kids didn't seem to mind and were happy to make the most of the swollen creek. Part of the main street in Chinatown remains closed tonight. It was the scene of heavy flooding after 238 millimetres fell yesterday. More heavy rain is forecast for tomorrow. And the damage to rail lines linking WA to the rest of the nation is worse than first thought. 
Assessors have discovered a 300-kilometre stretch of track is unusable and part of it is inaccessible. It means it could be another three weeks until supermarket items like dairy, rice, pasta and processed meats reach our side of the country. The track, which runs through South Australia, is critical for WA supplies. A once-in-200-year flood caused the damage. Today, the Air Force dropped essential supplies to isolated communities, which are also cut off by road. The countdown is on for Chinese New Year, which starts when the clock strikes midnight tonight. Our city is preparing for the official celebration to kick off on Sunday at the Cultural Centre, with up to 20,000 people expected. Then in the days following, the Chunghua Lions will dance through Perth's shopping strips. It's the Year of the Tiger, which is associated with business prosperity and courage, bringing hopes of a brighter 2022. The tradition is 3,000 years old, and this year will run until February 15th. A fourth vaccine dose could be on the cards to halt the spread of the fast-moving Omicron variant. The Federal Health Minister says the supplies and logistics are in place if we need to vaccinate the entire nation again, but it's likely to be for vulnerable patients only. If there were to be a fourth dose, it's more generally going to be focused on older Australians and immunocompromised Australians. Countries like Israel have already rolled out a fourth shot to people aged over 60. Britain this week will debate placing sanctions on Russia to try to force President Putin to abandon any plans for war. Boris Johnson will visit Kiev in the coming days. He's offering to increase troops across Eastern Europe and won't send any directly into Ukraine. Neighbouring countries already engaged in a propaganda war, a daily competition between Ukraine and Russia for the most striking military pictures. Ukrainian forces training in the east while the Russians unveiled their new fighter jet. <laughs> Today, Moscow sent an official request to the military alliance NATO urging it not to strengthen security. Russia still wants legal guarantees. Ukraine will never be a member. This will be a key question in determining our future proposals, which we will report to the President, Vladimir Putin. The more aggressive they are, the more NATO they will get at the borders with increased presence in the eastern part of the NATO alliance. In keeping with NATO's position, both America and the UK will send troops to the region if there's an attack, but won't put boots on the ground here in Ukraine. Both countries are also likely to introduce new laws as early as this week to impose a wider range of sanctions against Russia. Now, there's a real threat here to freedom and democracy in Europe. Ukrainians gathering today to show their gratitude to the West for military aid. They want to save Ukrainian people from a uh, new Russian invasion and it's very impolite not to say thank you to them. Criticising their own leader for downplaying the threat. Pretty surprised when our president is telling, oh, no, 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 guys, it's OK, it's OK. No, it's not. It's not OK. It's definitely not OK. In Kiev, Ukraine, Sarah Greenolch, Seven News. A man has turned himself over to police after a young woman's body was found in a bathtub full of acid. Officers had to break into the couple's Sydney apartment where they made the confronting discovery. A desperate drive for Mirage Zafa as he flees his home after allegedly killing his partner. Officers found the 19-year-old's body inside the couple's North Parramatta unit after the accused man called a relative, panicking that they'd had a fight. Officers forced entry to the unit and inside the bathroom they found the body of a female. I was in the backyard yesterday and at about 2 o'clock I heard somebody, it sounded like they were about to sing. Um, and then it turns straight into a bit of a scream. Arnima Hayat was dead in the bathtub, soaked in acid. Hazmat crews called in. The scene was very challenging for arriving police. Um, when they did arrive and found chemicals inside the unit, they retreated and called hazmat officers, who then spent several hours at the scene. A major manhunt covered several suburbs, with detectives circulating this image and warning the public to stay away. It was a little bit of a shock to see that it was just across the road. Officers went to Zafer's previous addresses in Greenacre and Wiley Park, but after 20 hours on the run, he went to them. Around midday, the suspect handed himself into Bankstown Police Station. Officers then found his getaway truck dumped here at Greenacre Bunnings, and it will now be taken for forensic examination. 
couple's home was intensely examined throughout the day and potential evidence was seized for testing. A kitten also removed from the unit. Natasha Squarey, 7 News. Homeowners could be in for a shock with record low rates set to come to an end. Experts predict a rate rise could happen as early as this year. Next, where to find the best deal for potential home buyers? Why a pint at the pub is about to become more expensive. Plus, a cheeky trip to refuel how one man dared to bear at the Bowser. And in sport in 10 minutes, the Eagles and Dockers home games up in the COVID air and cats gone wild. Slash your grocery bill to as little as $100 per week. Not only possible, see how far you can make it go on Sunrise tomorrow. Now, Fuel Watch. Perth's petrol prices brought to you by Fuel Watch and 7 News. The Australian share market started the week down and ended January with the biggest monthly drop since COVID first hit. Banking stocks were down, medical equipment maker Ansel plunged 14%, blaming falling demand for single-use gloves. Gold is trading at 1,788 US dollars an ounce and one Australian dollar is buying 70 US cents and 52 British pence. McDonald's has been accused of not giving staff paid breaks during their shifts. The union has lodged a statement of claim in the federal court, alleging hundreds of workers did not receive 10-minute breaks in 72 restaurants. It's demanding $100 million in back pay. McDonald's says it will defend itself against the claim and believed its restaurants had complied with workplace laws. A pint at the pub is expected to cost more from tomorrow. Hotels, brewers and clubs associations are calling for a 50% reduction in draft beer tax. The current excise is set to go up 2.1% tomorrow in, the, in line with the biannual increase. Industry leaders say a cut would be a huge help for businesses which have done the right thing during the pandemic. A man has turned heads at a Sydney service station, filling up his car while wearing nothing more than his sandals and sunglasses. He seemed quite relaxed as he paid for his fuel at the counter. Police say they're not investigating the incident because there were no complaints. The Reserve Bank is meeting tomorrow with an interest rate rise looming for later this year. Mortgage holders are in a good position for when it happens, but financial experts say now is the time to prepare. A real estate dream too lofty for some. It's just a little bit too extravagant to, be, to keep something like this. Many sizing up their options as the property market charges into a new year. Right now it is a very fast moving market. At this stage buyers are shrugging off the headwinds that we have been seeing. But most economists now sense change in the wind. More than half, 60% are expecting a cash rate rise this year and that's up from basically nobody towards the end of last year. As many as six interest rate hikes in the next two years. For future gazers, it means on a $500,000 loan, a rate hike to 3.4% would cost an extra $369 a month, or more than $4,400 a year. Brokers fielding calls, many desperate to fix their rate quick. Fixed rates under 2% are fast disappearing. The numbers are dropping day by day. The time to fix your rate would have been sometime last year, October, November last year. The Reserve Bank will meet tomorrow. Rates tipped to be kept on hold at 0.1%. Still, banks are already adjusting their expectations and buyers should too. If you've bought recently, you need to make sure you can afford those potential increases coming over the horizon, not just the rate you're paying today. Serena Andaloro, 7 News. A surprise set of wheels has overtaken the Toyota Camry as Australia's most popular family sedan. Coming up, which car came out on top and why drivers are deciding to switch. Don't miss that story soon on 7 News. And Baz is back now with more sport. That tennis final, Baz, yep. incredible. Uh, absolutely amazing, Rick and Sue. Yes, how Rafa climbed the mountain. More on the great Spaniard coming up, plus in limbo.
What do home games look like for our teams? The AFL Commission meet tomorrow. And Cats on the mat. The fallout from this NBL dust-up. Hello again. After his stunning win in the Australian Open men's final, Rafael Nadal is favourite for the French Open in May. Of course he is. Nadal now has 21 Grand Slam singles titles, one more than rivals Novak Djokovic and Roger Federer. Rewriting history with the merchandise to match, Rafael Nadal couldn't wipe the smile off his face. Even if he's still sore from a gruelling five-and-a-half-hour match. I tied at the final with Novak too that year in 2012. That was longer, even longer than, than this year, but I was more prepared. His success here didn't come easy. He missed Wimbledon and the US Open last year and contemplated retirement due to a chronic foot injury, then was struck by COVID pre-tournament. Trailing two sets to love. Oh, and he's got the pass. He fought back in astonishing fashion while Daniil Medvedev started to fatigue, becoming Make the first the man in 57 seven. years to win an Australian Open from two sets down. It's 21 for Rafa, and he stands alone at the summit of men's tennis. I really feel very proud about the, the way that we manage our rivalry during all our careers. A dispirited Medvedev heading home today, now questioning what his 2022 will look like. If there is a tournament on hard courts in Moscow uh, before uh, Roland Garros or Wimbledon, I'm going to go there, even if I miss a Wimbledon or Roland Garros. Meantime, Ash Barty's professional mentor has shared an insight into the world number one's headspace and how she's climbed to the top. She works so hard. She's Michael Jordan-esque in terms of how hard she works. Saying Barty has been inspired by other athletes who've sought the same help. She'd seen the growth in, in Trent Cochin and Steph Gilmore. That kind of self-compassion and acceptance can actually be a superpower and you don't take that pressure onto, you know, onto centre court. Laura Spurway, 7 News. West Coast Eagles captain Luke Shuey was running laps at training today but is in a race with time to be fit for round one of the new AFL season in seven weeks. Shuey underwent scans late last week after suffering another leg injury and the AFL Commission will hold a crucial meeting tomorrow to determine how the start of the season will look but they've admitted WA's hard borders are a problem. I don't think it's going to be great appetite for players outside Western Australia to be quarantining. It's a significant issue for both West Coast and Fremantle because they, they, they need home games and they need their crowds and they want their fans but it's also a, a big issue for the AFL. The Eagles are banking on the borders opening up before the start of the new season on March 16. Wildcat centre Matt Hodgson is facing an NBL suspension after being charged with engaging in a brawl and two striking offences after yesterday's loss to the Sydney Kings. Took three. Oh, jeez. Oh, Matt Hodgson, not oh, happy with no. what's going on. That's twice. And tensions have boiled right over at Kudos Bank Arena. It's so unusual. Four Kings players have been asked to explain why they shouldn't be penalised for their part in the basket brawl. The Matildas are heading home from the Asian Cup in shock. The Aussies had 15 shots in last night's quarter-final against South Korea but couldn't find the net. Sam Kerr missed a golden opportunity from right in front. The Koreans scored in the 87th minute to clinch an incredible 1-0 victory. I'm just devastated, to be honest. We, um, I don't, standing here, I don't really know how we, we've come out. The losers in that game were... A team full of world-class players and um, we keep coming up short in moments like this. Alan Stadjic, the former Aussie coach who was controversially sacked, guided the Philippines into the semi-finals. The fairy tale run of the Cincinnati Bengals continued today as they booked a place in the Super Bowl for the first time in 33 years, down by 18 points against hot favourites Kansas City. The Chiefs, they staged the biggest comeback in championship history. Cincinnati is heading to the Super Bowl. And they did it. They beat Mahomes at home. Wow, Joe Burrow. No way. 
Two years ago, the Bengals had the worst record in the league and Hollywood A-listers were out in force in LA to see the Rams beat the 49ers 20-17. to They'll host the Super Bowl in a fortnight in what will be the second consecutive year it will be played at a competing team's home stadium. There are fears Aussie Boomer star Joe Ingalls has suffered a serious knee injury which could jeopardise his NBA career. Oh my goodness. Ingalls slips and he is hurt. And that, no, no, no. That, that is, yeah, man, he is writhing no. in pain. The 34-year-old's left knee buckled in Utah's loss to Minnesota. And for the first time, women are competing at surfing spiritual home, Banzai Pipeline in Oahu. Bethany Hamilton, who lost an arm in a shark attack, replaced Steph Gilmore, who has COVID and won through to the round of 16. Former world champ Tyler Wright was among five Aussies to advance. And just before I go, the mail has arrived today, Rick or Sue, as we've all been joining you and celebrating uh, your world record, world record, can you believe it, 37 years, longest news anchor duo anywhere in the world. Here they are, Rick, from uh, the Guinness Book of Records. They've arrived today. You can open Thank them, you. frame them, put Thanks, them up Beth. at home. Thanks, can I say on behalf of all of us, everyone here at 7 News and everybody watching, <laughs> we're so proud of you. Congratulations. You've been icons, icons great colleagues and great friends, and you deserve every congratulations that you've had. Thanks, Thank Baz. you, Baz. And we have to thank journey. our mums too. Where would we be without our mums helping? <laughs> oh, they, were, they were stars last night. <laughs> they were. Well they were done great. mums and well done, Rick and Sue. Thank Thanks, you, Baz. Baz. Thanks a lot. Well, more Australians are making the switch from petrol to electric cars to avoid crippling fuel prices. The Tesla outsold the Toyota Camry despite being double the price of the Aussie family favourite. And the long wait to get one isn't putting buyers off. Daniel Kilford is one of a growing number of Australians switching to electric vehicles. The car's doing everything itself now. Demand for electric and hybrid vehicles tripling in the past 12 months. In electric cars, they're still more expensive than we'd like them to be, but over the next couple of years, they'll be under 50,000. New figures show the Tesla Model 3 was the most popular sedan last year, beating established favourites like Toyota's Camry and Corolla, the Kia Cerato and the Mazda 3. Australian drivers bought more than 15,000 Tesla Model 3s last year. They started almost $63,000. It cost Mr Kilford $10 a week in electricity to run his. You think it's worth the money? Absolutely it is. Very fun to drive. In 10 years, the number of electric and hybrid cars sold in Australia has risen dramatically, from fewer than 50 to 24,000. And for those in the market, the current wait time is around six months. The biggest challenge that we've had in Australia hasn't been getting more people to want to buy electric vehicles. It's been getting a supply of electric vehicles made available to them. The good news is there are now more than 3,000 charging stations across Australia, most no more than 200 kilometres apart. Before I had an EV, I had anxiety about running out of charge. And then when you jump online and have a look at an app like PlugShare, there are hundreds and hundreds of charges. Kathleen O'Connor, 7 News. Sam Jolly's got your weather next and it's slowly warming up this week, Sam. Yeah, Rick, we've been enjoying some fairly typical summer's days, but it's about to get quite hot again. I'll have the forecast right after the break. Hello again. Today the easterly winds dominated, so the temperature kept climbing until we got to 31.6 degrees. That was just before 3.30 and we still haven't had a sea breeze. Right now it is 20 degrees and there is a 17 kilometre an hour easterly. Ballsbrook got to 32 today. It was 31 for Fremantle and further south and a cooler 28 for Kalamunda. A different story for our Kimberley. Heavy falls there and flooding. Broome has had a whopping 370 millimetres over the past few days. And our hotspot was Robin with 44 degrees today. So a tropical low embedded in a monsoon trough is bringing that heavy rainfall to parts of the Kimberley. For the metro area, we do have a high pressure ridge pushing south of the state. On the east coast, showers in Canberra and Sydney tomorrow. A warm top of 35 for Brisbane and a possible early shower in Adelaide. For WA tomorrow, heavy falls again for the Kimberley. 42 degrees in Exmouth. It's looking windy for Carnarvon and mostly sunny along our southwest. On local waters, we do have a strong wind warning with east to south easterlies reaching up to 30 knots, 
early tomorrow morning, then south to southeast in the early afternoon. So tomorrow will be a mostly sunny day, top of 32 degrees, a bit cooler tonight. We're dipping to 15. Then we have a sunny 34 on Wednesday. We're getting up to 36. Thursday, hot is still on Friday, a top of 37. And for our weekend, we have a mostly sunny 35 on Saturday, cooling right down on Sunday, a partly cloudy 27 degrees, and then 29 for next Monday. Now for tonight's winning lotto numbers for draw 4152. They are 12, 2, 21, 43, 17, 41, and the SUPs are 13 and 29. Those numbers again are 12, 2, 21, 43, 17, 41, and the SUPs are 13 and 29. So, Enrique. Thanks, Sam. That's 7 News for your Monday. We'll be back with updates throughout the evening. Thanks for joining us. For the latest stories, head to 7news.com.au. Enjoy the rest of your night here on 7.